Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I somehow, even though this movie isn't scheduled to come out until October 21st, I was able to see an early copy of Leatherface. Leatherface is a 2017 horror film that was directed by Alexandre Bustillo and Julian Mori. Yes, two different people directed this movie. And the premise of this movie is that it's a prequel. It's a prequel to show the early young life of Leatherface, him and his family, how he was raised and brought up to become the serial killer that we all know and love. And I know what some of you are thinking. Wait, didn't they already do a prequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that told the origins and beginnings of Leatherface? Yes, they did. But you see, that was for the remake. This is a prequel to the original, the 1974 original classic. Man, let me just say right off the bat, Fuck this fucking movie. At the beginning of the movie, you see the Sawyer family and how when Leatherface or Jebediah, whatever the fuck his name was when he was a kid, he got a chainsaw for his birthday and the family wanted him to use it to kill. They're trying to teach him how to kill and he's reluctant to do it. And then you see that there are many deaths in the town that this family is involved in. And the, the sheriff, he's, he's on to them. He knows that something's up. So he takes the boy. He takes young Leatherface and, and puts him in some foster situation. He really ends up in a mental hospital. You jump ahead 10 years later and the mother's still trying to get him out. But it's not working. Until one night, they all break out. All of the inmates run the asylum. They break out and they're all loose. And the fact that this movie is consisted of... We don't know who Leatherface grew up to be. Because we saw him as a kid. The film jumped ahead 10 years. So we're looking at this group of inmates. And we're supposed to all sit there and say, Is it this person? Oh, look. That person is sort of shaped like Leatherface. Maybe it's him. Or no, look at this other guy. He's crazy. That's probably him. And the film just keeps this mystery. It becomes a mystery on which one of these kids is going to grow up and become Leatherface. How fucking stupid. Why? Why? Why would you do this? What was the point of this movie? It, like, if you're going to sell it on a prequel... And, and to tell the origins, you failed at that. You didn't even do that right. And then the story that you gave us, because maybe you think you're trying to be something different. No, you're being stupid, fucking lazy, and unnecessary. Let's go through some of the actors. You have Lily Taylor as Verna. She is the mother of the whole family. I mean, she might be your aunt, but she also might be your cousin, or your mother, or your fucking grandmother. Who the fuck knows? She's the head matriarch of the family and she's a good actress sure but there wasn't even much for her to do let's be honest she only got a few scenes really and she's playing that typical generic crazy head mother of this family that you've always seen in each and every one one of these fucking movies steven dorf plays the ranger the texas ranger the sheriff whatever you want to call him and steven dorf is one of those actors where it's like where the fuck has he been <laughs> Seriously, since Blade, where has this guy been? He's a good enough actor. At the beginning of the movie where he takes the kid away from them, it makes sense because his daughter was just murdered. Like the first person, one of the first people you see get murdered in the movie is this young girl who's his daughter. So that he instantly has a vendetta against his family. He instantly is like, fuck them. I'm taking this kid away from you because you don't deserve it. And I'm going to spend the whole rest of this movie basically trying to kill you all. But what the movie does is because it's in the point of view of the inmates. Because one of the people in the group is one of the nurses at the hospital who gets taken hostage by the inmates. So she's along with the group. They all present in their eyes 
the sheriff as the villain. Even though Steven Dorff is right. Even though they are a bunch of fox, sick fox, and should get all killed. They make him look like the crazed, crooked cop asshole. What? Didn't we do this already? Didn't we do this in Texas Chainsaw a few years ago where the movie made the people of the town the villains and try to make us sympathetic towards the Sawyer family? They tried to do that already. Evidently, it didn't work because you had to go and do another prequel because that's all they keep doing is going backwards in time. And it's stupid. It's stupid because even if you want to say, hey, we're going to have a big reveal, a big swerve, a big twist at the end where you're supposed to be shocked and you find out that the cop is actually good and that the family is actually sick and twisted. That's how they play it anyways. But if I'm watching this movie, chances are I've seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Chances are I've seen any of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, I already know that this family is fucked. Who are you catering to? Who are you presenting this story for? Who is this supposed to be a surprise for? Not me. And the bunch of inmates, you have Lizzie, who, like I said, was the nurse. So she is the, quote, good person in the group. The actress was fine. Jackson, who's an inmate, who's a little crazy, but he has a thing for Lizzie and and she kind of has a thing for him too. She thinks she can save him and bullshit bullshit. Bud, who's the big fat dude that looks the most like he could be Leatherface because it's all a mystery. Clarice, who's this crazy fucking dumb bitch who fucks whoever she wants and and does whatever she wants, kills whoever she wants. Is a scene where they go into a diner and shoot up a bunch of people just because, just because they're all fucking evil. And her boyfriend Ike, crazy as hell. Like those two, they're a couple, but they're batshit crazy. So you're honestly you can't wait for those two fucks to die. Luckily, it doesn't take all that long for them to die. I know I'm spoiling shit, but at this point, who fucking cares? Uh, also, I want to mention Finn Jones. If that name sounds familiar, it's because he was just an Iron Fist earlier this year and the Defenders. He's becoming a, a, a pretty big name, at least in the Marvel world, if you're into watching those things. He was in Game of Thrones before that. It's so weird. It's so weird to see him in this movie. I'm assuming before... Maybe he shot this before he shot that or shot them at the same time so he hadn't quite blown up yet. It's so random that he would agree to do this low-budget, cheap, random, direct-to-DVD, probably Leatherface movie. His character is that he's the deputy, so he's looking at Steven Dorff, who's killing people or who's doing what he has to do to find who he has to find. And he's the good cop. He's like, oh my god, you can't do this. You're going too far. Stop. Yada yada. Until the end of the movie where you find out that he is being paid off by the Sawyers. And then after that, after they're done using him, they kill him. And they kill him in the lamest shit fuck way of cutting him and letting the pigs eat him. Really? That's how you kill off Iron Fist? Wow! Wow, wow. And then the end of this movie, the big reveal is that the family are the sick fox and the evil ones. And of course, everyone dies. You find out that Jackson is the one who's actually Leatherface. Big twist, because he's not the fat one. He doesn't look anything like Leatherface. The whole explanation of his face and why he does start to wear people's faces, it doesn't even make any sense. He gets his face scarred from getting shot. So he wasn't disfigured. He didn't have a disease like the remake prequel explained, which that actually made sense. At least that one, he started out as a kid having a fascination with wearing faces. He started with animals and then worked his way up to... Like, that made sense. This is lazy. This is some of the laziest backstory origin prequel bullshit I have ever seen. And if you really want to present Leatherface as this big, iconic, legendary killer, 
You're doing such a disservice to him and to this lore and this legend, especially after Toby Hooper is dead now and you're shitting all over possibly his greatest creation and his greatest movie. Fuck! There's no way he had any involvement in this before he died. Or maybe by that point he didn't give a fuck. This is an abortion, an abomination of a film. Let me know in the comments below if you too have seen this movie or if you're for some strange reason still interested in seeing this movie. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! Please won't you save my desire.